Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and to the first proper study with me video of this new season. If you're new here, my name is Ali, I'm a junior doctor working in Cambridge and I'm preparing for a specialty exam in obstetrics and gynaecology. So as usual, I'll take you through my day explaining what I'm doing as I go along, so hopefully you can pick up some study tips or just waste a bit of time on the internet, whichever floats your boat. I'll be honest, this wasn't the longest of study days, but the exam is over a year away and I came across a great quote the other day, which is that consistency is more important than intensity. Overall, I did manage to get a decent amount of work done, ran a few errands and had some friends over in the evening for a gourmet takeaway courtesy of Just Eat, who are very kindly sponsoring this video. So the day begins at 9am when I wake up. Uh, normally I wake up for work at half past six so I can hit the gym before starting at half past eight. But today I have the day off so I treat myself to a bit of a lion. I then spend the next hour and a half having a shower and then procrastinating on my phone. Anyway, from 10.30 onwards, I do a bit of admin, reply to some of your emails and spend the next hour deciding whether to use Evernote or OneNote for my personal revision guide. Quick aside, this idea of a personal revision guide is something I've not really talked about before but it's something I'd recommend for subjects where you don't have an easily accessible summary of stuff available at a glance. I'd been using OneNote for the last few years of med school, but I decided to give Evernote a try and I'll do a more detailed comparison video once I decide which I prefer. So after looking up the syllabus online, I spend some time creating Evernote notebooks for each of the 17 subjects within my syllabus. I then recreate this organization in Notability on the iPad using a main divider for my Obzingani exam preparation and then 17 subjects for each area of the syllabus. Now at this point you might be wondering why I'm using both Notability and Evernote. The basic idea is that I'll be using Notability to essentially act as a rough notepad where I can take handwritten notes, where I can scroll stuff down while I'm doing past paper questions, where I can test my active recall of concepts by writing down everything I know by drawing diagrams. And then my notebooks on Evernote are going to be my own mini textbook of sorts. I, I like to call it my personal revision guide, i.e. where I put down concise summaries of stuff but above those I'll put down all my active recall questions for that particular topic. So the idea is that I'll be able to click on a subject, let's say, I don't know, um, early pregnancy medicine, um, and then within that just at a glance see all of the 20 different topics within that, click on any one of them and see all of my questions that I've written for that subject, but then I'd also see all of the all of the content in, in a bullet point format. And I'll be doing more videos once I flesh this out, explaining in more detail exactly how it works. So now that I've got my notebooks organized, I decide that that's enough work for one morning. And I spend some time washing the dishes, cleaning the kitchen and warming some soup and bread for lunch. I then grab my boosted board and head over to the hospital to firstly drop off some lunch for my housemate who's at work because I'm such a good friend. Secondly, to pick up a fun little package that I had delivered to the hospital. And thirdly, to hit the gym because I missed my workout that morning thanks to my lion. I get home around 4 p.m. when I make some coffee and uh, unbox this new fancy Apple Watch, which is quite exciting and that I'll be doing a review on later on. At this point, I've got around two and a half hours before my friends arrive for our fancy Just Eat takeaway party. So for the next hour, I go through each of the subjects on the specification. Now, firstly, in Notability, I write down all the topics I think should belong in that section based on my medical school knowledge. And then I look at the proper specification and I fill in what I've missed out in another color. And I find this helpful because it forces me to actually think about the big picture and about my previous knowledge. Whereas if I just copied and pasted the specification, I won't really be using my brain at all. And that's not a good thing. Now, there are three more points I want to make about this whole scoping the subject thing. Firstly, while I'm writing each topic down, I casually run through my memory and think about what I can remember from that topic, just like a few lines per topic. And this is, again, the principle that active recall is a way of life i.e. In, in almost everything that I do study-wise, I'm using active recall in some way because obviously it's the most efficient exam prep tactic. And whenever I'm not using active recall, like if I'm writing out notes or if I'm copying and pasting some stuff from the internet, there's something within me that feels really sad because I know that everything other than active recall is just a super inefficient way to study. And therefore I find this works as a good signal for me to not overly rely on things like making notes or on copying and pasting stuff from the internet because I'll just be fooling myself into thinking that I'm actually being productive. Secondly, as I'm doing this whole scoping the subject thing, I come across a few areas of the specification that I'm a little bit suspicious about. Within one of the subjects, I see the topic fetal anatomy and embryology. Now, fetal anatomy and embryology is a huge, huge topic that entire textbooks have been written about. Uh, and embryology, which is the study of how a human being forms in the womb from conception onwards, is supposed to be a notoriously hard topic. Uh, it makes sense for it to be on the Obzingani specification because it's an important part of obstetrics, but I suspect it's only the very basics that I'm going to need to know rather than the whole thing. And actually within most subjects there are these topics like this one that are included within the subject because they've got some relevance, but actually 
the detail you need to know about these topics is much less than the other core topics. And I think it's really important to flag these up early on so that you don't waste time going too deep into topics that aren't as important or aren't as examined as others. Finally, while I'm doing all of this, I'm listening to my Spotify study with me playlist, which will be linked below. And this has instrumental tracks from films, TV shows, classical music, musicals, and more. I've spent the last six years uh, curating this playlist. It spans about 45 hours so far, and I update it every time I come across a new song uh, that's interesting or, you know, if I decide I don't like something. Uh, the evidence says it's probably best to not listen to music at all, but if you are listening to music, then the evidence says that instrumentals are probably better than music with lyrics, because music with lyrics interferes with your kind of working memory processing. Uh, I'll do another video about this a bit later on. Uh, I do sometimes work without music, but because I want to enjoy studying, I'm more than happy to take the slight efficiency hit that comes from having instrumentals in the background, because overall it just makes it a much nicer kind of feng shui when, when doing work. So by around 5 p.m. I find myself getting restless because I've been doing this scoping subject and active recall thing for about an hour. Uh, I intend to take a 10 minute break, uh, but end up spending an hour jamming on my guitar and recording a bit of Castle on the Hill by Ed Sheeran for my Instagram, which you should definitely follow if you're not already. And I like to call this uh, technique productive procrastination, uh, which is a little buzzword that makes me feel less bad about spending so much time doing it. From 6 p.m. to 6.30, I finish off the scoping of the subjects. Uh, I kind of blitz through this last bit because I'm getting bored by this point. Um, and it's almost time for my friends to arrive for our little takeaway and board games party. And by this point, I've got a pretty good overview of all the subjects within Obzingani for the exam. When my friends arrive, we're all very excited to order from Just Eat. So firstly, we spend about 20 minutes actually deciding where to order from because there's just too much choice. And then once we've decided a local Chinese restaurant that we all like, uh, we crowd around the computer and work out what kind of combination of taste and healthiness that we can, we can get from it. Uh, in the time it takes for the food to arrive, we bust out the board game Catan, which is awesome. Uh, and we just enjoy each other's company, have a little chat about our jobs, that sort of thing. Then the food arrives courtesy of Just Eat. Thanks again, guys, for sponsoring this video. A cue cinematic montage of us eating food. <laughs> After devouring our food, we finish off our game of Catan, in which I came second, sadly, with my amazing stone and sheep strategy. And that brings us to the end of the day. Thank you very much for watching, and thanks again Just Eat for sponsoring the video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. Have a lovely day, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.